Welcome to your February 2022 horoscope. My name is Kaylin and today I'm going to be covering the major transits for the month ahead using tropical astrology and the whole sign system. I strongly recommend that you watch your horoscope for your ascendant sign first and foremost and that is because the ascendant sign will be the most accurate for you overall generally speaking. Having said that the sun sign horoscope will tell you more about your life goals and your career whereas the moon sign horoscope will pertain more to your family and your living circumstances. So if you've got time to watch all three go for it now lastly before i get into your horoscope i just wanted to let you know that i still have my 2022 yearly horoscopes available for purchase so i will leave a link in the description box below and now let's get into your horoscope hi gemini sun moon and risings welcome to your february 2022 horoscope before i get into your reading today i just wanted to pull an animal spirit totem card just to see what energies will be with you for the month ahead and we've got the buffalo. So this makes me think that there is a project or something that you are working towards, which will take a lot of determination and persistence. Buffaloes don't change direction very quickly. So this tells me that there is something that you need to stick with and not make too many adjustments to, despite someone trying to pressure you to do otherwise. Now, on the 1st of February, there will be a new moon in Aquarius at 12 degrees in your ninth house, and it will be in a close conjunction with Saturn, which is one of the rulers of Aquarius. The other ruler of Aquarius is Uranus, and this new moon will actually be making a square to Uranus in Taurus in your 12th house. New moons indicate a new chapter or a new beginning taking place somewhere in our lives. Considering that this one is occurring in your ninth house, for many of you Geminis, it will affect you in one or more of the following ways. Your education, international travel, import and export, publications, and perhaps something to do with your religious and spiritual beliefs, or maybe even your political and your world beliefs. On the education front, some of you may be pursuing some sort of new form of education. So maybe you're looking to enroll in a course or apply for a master's program, or perhaps some of you are deciding to take on the role of being a teacher. And this is emphasized by this conjunction to Saturn. Saturn is one of the planets which is associated with teaching. So for some of you, education will be at the forefront of your mind around the 1st of February. Given that this new moon is squaring Uranus in the 12th house, this indicates that whatever is occurring on the educational front, it will not leave you with very much time for rest and relaxation or even for leisurely activities. And that is because the 12th house is connected to sleep, rest, relaxation, and also the 12th house represents escapism. So whatever it is that you would normally do to sort of numb yourself or escape from reality, this new chapter that's starting in your life will not really allow you to do that. Even if this is not to do with education, this could still come through in the form of your spiritual pursuits or your religious pursuits. And I'm saying that because this new moon being conjunct Saturn represents that there's some sort of responsibility that you are going to be taking on. So maybe you are going to be working with a religious figure or with a spiritual figure or with some sort of teacher, even if it's not in the sort of traditional learning format that you would normally come to expect. Now, there may be an opportunity here for you to travel abroad on a different level, even if the opportunity isn't coming now, you could be making plans for the long term. Now, you may actually have to spend a lot of money up front in order to make this happen. And I'm saying that because this square to Uranus in the 12th house represents there being a large expense, which is unexpected. Now, on a different level, some of you may be adding a new dimension to your existing business. So maybe you're looking at importing or delivering your goods and your products internationally. And again, there could be some big expenses involved with setting all of this up. 
Lastly, the ninth house is connected to publications. And with this new moon being conjunct Saturn, it represents there being some sort of formalized commitment that you are making to another person. Now, I want you to know that this new moon will actually be making a semi-sextile to Venus in Capricorn in your eighth house. And Venus represents your creative gifts and talents and it also rules over your fifth house which is connected to authorship so again we're seeing a couple of points here which indicate that some of you gemini's may be looking at authoring a book and maybe you're signing up with some sort of publishing agent now on the 9th of february we are going to see mars in capricorn in your eighth house making a trine to uranus in taurus in your 12th house this indicates that help or assistance may be afoot and it may be very unexpected. And I'm saying that because the 12th house is representative of something which is hidden. And the 8th house is also connected to secrets and keeping things hidden. So perhaps there's someone who is looking out for you and you may not even know who this person is. Now the reason I'm saying this is because Uranus rules over the 9th house. And the 9th house is connected to good luck and fortune. And the 9th house is also representative of influential figures and people who want to help us. So another way that this could play out is that there could be some sort of unexpected work or business opportunity which comes through for you. And this is because Mars rules over your sixth house, which represents your work. Having said that, Mars rules over your 11th house, which represents your long-term goals and dreams. And it is also connected to investors and benefactors. So this is where we can see some financial help and assistance coming through for you. Now, on a different level, some of you may just feel like you are receiving help from people who've crossed over to the other side. So this could be a loved one or perhaps it's one of your spirit guides. Now, this could just see you working on a project behind the scenes and maybe you're actually working on some sort of secret project. Perhaps you're not allowed to reveal information about this project at this point in time. And again, I'm saying this because the 8th house and the 12th house are both connected to secrets. Now, some of you may actually be collaborating with another person and this could come up really suddenly. And the reason I'm saying this could come up suddenly is because Uranus represents unexpected happenings and both Uranus and Mars are associated with things happening very, very quickly. Now, another way that this can play out is that some of you may experience a spontaneous reprieve from some kind of health issue. And this is because Mars rules over your sixth house and the sixth house is connected to your health. Also, the eighth house in astrology is one of the houses which is connected to healing. So you may actually experience some sort of health ailment simply disappearing very suddenly and you may not even know what caused this health issue or this health ailment to subside. Now for those of you who have health ailments and issues that don't just solve themselves suddenly, another way that this transit can play out is that you may receive the information that is required to help you heal from this situation or improve this situation. And I'm saying this because Uranus represents divine knowledge and information. And with Mars being the planet of strategy and taking action, perhaps the solution appears and you know what you need to do next. Lastly, with this transit, which is obviously a very, very beneficial transit, a conflictual situation with another person may suddenly dissolve or resolve itself. Now, on the 11th or 12th of February, we are going to see Mercury and Pluto form a conjunction at 27 degrees in your 8th house. Of course, Mercury is your ruling planet as a Gemini sun, moon or rising. So you will be feeling this one on a very deep level. Now, I just want to make it known that Mercury stationed direct on the 3rd slash 4th of February, depending where you live in the world. So we are out of the Mercury retrograde period, although we are still in the shadow period. Something else to note is that Mercury formed this conjunction with Pluto 
at the end of December and then again at the end of January. So this is actually the third and final conjunction for this period of time. So for some of you, you may have applied for a rather large loan and you can be successful in obtaining this. On a different level, some of you may actually be purchasing a new property. And I'm saying this because not only is Mercury your ruling planet, it also rules over your fourth house, which represents your property and your living circumstances. So yes, you may be purchasing a property, you may be signing a new lease, or perhaps someone is putting a property into your name. You could actually be inheriting a property as well. And that is because Pluto represents mutual resources and the eighth house is connected to inheritances. On a different level, you could be combining your resources with another individual. And some of you may be receiving a big lump sum of money for your work or for something which is connected to your health. And I'm saying that because Pluto rules over your sixth house, which is connected to work and health. So a way that this could play out is that you may be receiving some kind of payout for a workplace injury, just as an example. On a different level, the eighth house is connected to psychology and anything to do with the occult. So you may be having a huge psychological breakthrough, and this could be to do with personal development. This could be to do with your family, your family life, planning to start a family. This could be connected to your childhood, your health. And in terms of how this psychological breakthrough can come about, it can be with a psychologist or a counselor. It can be with someone who is involved with the occult or spirituality, such as an astrologer or a tarot reader. And on a different level, you could be doing your own independent research and you may be going quite deep into your psychological influences and your childhood influences. So maybe you're having this breakthrough due to your own ability to heal yourself. Now, lastly, this conjunction in your eighth house can see you doing some deep, deep research and some investigative work. And you could actually overturn something really, really juicy. And I'm saying that because Pluto is connected to scandals and it is also associated with getting to the root cause of an issue and of course Pluto is naturally associated with the eighth house anyway so if there's something that you've been wanting to find out or do some research into you could have a huge breakthrough around the 11th or the 12th of February now on the 16th of February we are going to see a full moon in Leo take place at 27 degrees in your third house and it will be making an in conjunction to Pluto in Capricorn in your eighth house. Full moons indicate the completion of a cycle or something reaching its peak. So with this full moon occurring in your third house, some of you may be completing a course or a qualification. You may be finishing an apprenticeship. You may be receiving your license or a diploma for something, or perhaps you have finished writing some sort of communications piece. So this could be an article, a report, a blog entry, or perhaps you've completed some sort of video or video series for YouTube or something of the like. Now you may have finished a website or you could have developed an app or some sort of new technology or even a vehicle. So with this completion of one of those aforementioned things, if not more, you may be experiencing this bittersweet energy or perhaps there is a lack of emotion with regard to completing this chapter altogether. And I'm saying this because of the in conjunction to Pluto in your eighth house. In conjunctions are 150 degree aspects, which create some sort of confusion or diversion, or we may just feel a little bit um, misdirected in what we were trying to achieve. So with this in conjunction in your eighth house, which is a very emotional and psychological house, Maybe you feel like you should be feeling more happy or feeling relieved about completing some sort of chapter in your life. And maybe the corresponding emotion which you would have expected to experience is absent. Or maybe you're feeling a totally different emotion altogether, which 
just doesn't really seem to align with what you would have expected. Having said that, that doesn't mean that you are on the wrong path or that you should suddenly change the trajectory that you were on, remembering that you pulled the buffalo card. So this in conjunction to Pluto, which is stirring up some sort of weird emotion in you at the moment or lack thereof is really just an invitation for you to delve deeper. Maybe there's a piece of the puzzle that's missing here. Maybe you should be looking at scaling your project up even bigger. Maybe there is a feeling of dissatisfaction because you are starting to recognize that you haven't really reached your full potential yet. Now, on the 16th or the 17th of February, depending where you live in the world, we are going to see Venus and Mars form a conjunction at 16 degrees in Capricorn in your 8th house. Your 8th house is really getting a workout this month, so I'm expecting many of you Geminis, myself included as a Gemini rising, to be doing a lot of deep introspective work and you'll really have to be digging beneath the surface to see what's going on. Now with this conjunction occurring in your eighth house on a material level you may be combining your resources with another person and I'm saying this because the eighth house represents our mutual resources and Mars rules over your 11th house which represents benefactors and we've also got Venus ruling over your fifth house which represents owning your own business. Now, Venus is a planet which is associated with money and resources as it is. So maybe you're combining your resources with another person, which involves investing in shares, the stock market, investing in someone else's business idea, or vice versa. Now, you may be seeking out someone else's resources in the way of financial compensation. So maybe you're contacting a former romantic partner as represented by Venus ruling over your fifth house. Maybe you are seeking out money from this partner for child support services. And again, this would be indicated by Venus ruling over your fifth house. With Mars ruling over your sixth house, you could be seeking out money for a workplace injury or workplace harassment claims. Now, some of you may be consulting with a psychologist or someone in the occult industry, and this could be to do with looking at improving your health or trying to heal some sort of health issue. You could be consulting a psychologist or someone in the occult industry or the spiritual industry because you're looking at improving your sex life or getting to the bottom of some sort of sexual complications. On a different level, you could just be engaging the services of an astrologer, a tarot reader, a numerologist, or anyone who practices some sort of spiritual or divinatory practice. Now, with regard to your sex life and intimacy, this can see a new intimate relationship of a sexual nature occurring. Now, for those of you who are already in a romantic relationship, your sex life with your partner could take a very raunchy turn for the better. Perhaps you are discovering your own sexual fantasies or that of your partner, and you may be exploring these. Even if you are single and you are not starting up some sort of new sexual relationship, you may just have some sort of breakthrough on a psychological level when it comes to issues that you have experienced in the bedroom or in your sexual intimate life in the past. Now, lastly for the month, on the 24th slash 25th of February, depending where you live in the world, we're going to see Mercury in Aquarius in your ninth house, making a square to Uranus in Taurus in your 12th house. And this will be occurring at 11 degrees. Mercury, once again, is your ruling planet. So you really will be feeling this one, Gemini. For some of you, this can result in a spiritual awakening. Now, the square aspect indicates that there is some kind of challenge which is taking place here. So maybe this spiritual awakening happens at a very inconvenient time. It could be a jarring experience. It could happen unexpectedly. You could have this spiritual awakening because you have come across information or knowledge that you do not feel ready to receive. And I'm saying that because Mercury is the planet of communications and it is in the ninth house, which is connected to higher learning, higher wisdom, and the ninth house is also a very spiritual house. Now, some of you could be having some kind of 
otherworldly experience and this could completely change how you view the world and i'm saying this because uranus is the higher octave of mercury in that it represents divine knowledge and information and it is in the 12th house which is a very mystical house which is connected to the other side so with mercury being in the ninth house which represents your world beliefs and how you view the world this experience could really just Turn your whole perspective on life on its axis. Now, a different way that this can play out is that there could be an opportunity here for you to develop your spiritual knowledge further. And perhaps you're experiencing some kind of um, pull in this direction. So with the square to Uranus in your 12th house, you could feel as though you weren't really looking for this, but then something just draws your attention to this matter or to the development of your intuitive abilities or of your psychic abilities. Lastly, with this transit, this could see you planning to do something that other people simply do not approve of. And I'm saying that because Mercury is your ruling planet and it rules over your first house as well as your fourth house, as I mentioned earlier. And this square to Uranus, which rules over your ninth house, which represents spiritual advice, father figures, and trusted advisors. Basically, the square element shows that this individual in your life doesn't really approve of what you are planning. So you could be planning an international trip, as indicated by the ninth house. You could be looking to relocate abroad, as represented by Mercury ruling over the fourth house. You could be looking at relocating to somewhere very, very remote. And this is indicated by the 12th house as it is. And perhaps there's someone in your life who just doesn't agree with this trajectory that you're on or with this direction that you want to go in. Now, having said all this, on the 24th and the 25th of February, we are also going to have Mars in Capricorn sextiling Neptune in Pisces. Venus in Capricorn will also sextile Neptune and Mercury in Capricorn will sextile Chiron in Aries. So essentially, my advice here to you, if you're looking for it, is to keep going on the path you are on. Thanks to the buffalo, okay, this is not a time for you to be dramatically redirected by people in your life who do not understand your spiritual mission. This is about you not being dissuaded from your spiritual mission, your creative mission, and with your vision for the future and with you taking control of your life. And so, Gemini, that's all I have for you for February 2022. If you'd like to purchase your 2022 yearly horoscope, you can do so by clicking on the link in the description box below. Enjoy your month ahead, Gemini, and I will see you guys next time.